Okay, so tonight is Tuesday night, developing unwavering faith every Tuesday with Reverend Dickerson. Go right ahead, Reverend Dickerson, and thank you for bringing. All right. The well, word. Good evening to you, Sister Tracy, and grace and peace unto you. Grace and peace to all the Zionites who may be online and their families. Grace and peace to all the guests who may be on the line this evening. I, I welcome you to our Tuesday night session, de uh, develop, wait, de <laughs> developing un wavering faith where we come out of James 1, 6, where it states, I let them ask in faith without wavering. I pray all is well with you and your families. I pray the Lord is blessing you, keep you while we're going through whatever it is you may be dealing with at this present time. And of course, I want to continue to encourage you to continue to trust him, continue to believe in him, continue to pray and continue believing God for your breakthrough. And I believe and never give up. And I believe he will see you through and i pray that you had a wonderful blessed and safe day if you have your bibles i would like you to turn to matthew chapter 7 verses 7 and 8 a very familiar passage of scripture matthew chapter 7 7 and 8 and if you can stand for the reading of god's word we'll do that all right matthew chapter 7 Seven and eight reads as this. It reads as follows in the King James Version. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened in, unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. My brothers and fine friends, as we're dealing with developing unwavering faith, and I've shared with you many, many times before about when it comes to developing unwavering faith, how you got to what? Believe the word, receive the word, confess the word, and act on the word like it's already so, because according to God's word, it is already so. And so in order for you to develop your unwavering faith in, in the word of God, and the things of God, you got to practice these things. But also, my brothers, sisters, family, and friends, we must not forget the basics. Now, that would seem to be the basics, believing, receiving, confessing, and acting uh, like it's already so. But there's some even more primary, mm -hmm, basics, elementary stuff that we need to be reminded of as, as we continue to develop unwavering faith when it comes to seeking God out for things. And so not to get ahead of myself. And so tonight's message, I like to bring a simple message. You quite sure you heard many teach on this before. And a simple title is ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Again, Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open into, unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. My brothers and sisters, fine friends, whatever you need or whatever you would like God to bring to pass in your life, and or whatever you want him want to help, uh, what, what you want him to help you to accomplish in your life, <clears throat> it is as simple as what? Just asking, seeking, and knocking. The first step is you need to what? Ask. Step one, just ask. Mm -hmm. It may very well be that you are not seeing your prayers answered or accomplishing what you want to accomplish in your life because you, for some reason, due to fear, or lack of confidence, or lack of faith in God, have not asked God about your requests, and or you have asked him with impure motives. James 4, 2 and 3 says this, yet you have not because you ask not. Ye ask and you receive not because ye ask a miss that ye may consume it upon 
your lust. When you're asking, you got to have pure motives. When you're asking, you got to come from a, a pure motives as far as from the heart, not just because you want it, because you see it because you want it. God don't mind you having things. However, we have a tendency to, to be asking things out, out of our lust and no other, no other, for no other reason than because just because we want it. Well, he says you have not because you ask not, you ask and receive not because you ask of mist that you may consume it upon your own lust. Your, your lust just means you're, you're asking out of pure motives. Anyway, moving on. Whatever you need God to do for you, my brothers and family and friends, it all starts with what? Just simply asking. And then be sure you ask with pure motives. motives. And then, of course, we're talking about developing unwavering faith. And so, of course, I'm going to say to you, based on James uh, 1, 5, 8, it talks about uh, ask in what? Faith. Uh, next thing you need to do is what? After asking, you need to what? Seek. Step two, you must seek. To see your prayers come to pass in your life, you, you must, after asking, now seek him or seek God out. So how do we do that? How do we seek God out? Well, seeking him out in your prayer life, spending time with him in prayer and in your devotional time of reading his word. God wants a, my brothers and family, friends, a real relationship with you, not a haphazard one where you are only seeking him because you want something or because some crazy situation has, a, has arisen in your life. When, when any other time, you're not paying him any mind at all. Seeking him by belonging mm -hmm, to a church. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add a God-fearing church, a Bible believing church, a faith believing church, and attending regularly, and by getting involved with others in the congregation, by seeking him out in your actions and, and, and deeds, and by the way you treat others, putting them before yourself. We seek him by uh, obeying him and by following his commandments. Isaiah 55 6 says this. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And so after you ask the Lord for what you need, and then after you have uh, now begin to start seeking him out in your life, the next thing you need to do is, is start knocking. You need to knock. Step three, just knock. Now that you have asked, and seek or sort the Lord, you now must begin to knock and keep on knocking. I'm going to explain this keep on knocking thing in a few minutes. When we go to God and ask him about our needs, we get God's what? Attention. This is the what? The baby stage of prayer. When we ask him about our needs, we just what? We need to just, just ask. Well, that's the baby stage of prayer for since we were kids, our parents taught us that when we want something, we need to what? Just ask. When we begin to seek out God in every area of our lives, this is what pleases him, along with having faith in him, of course, along with, like, yeah, this, this is the adolescence stage of prayer. For to seek God is to please God. Now, the next step to seeking our prayers coming to pass or seeing our prayers coming to pass in our favor is by knocking. By knocking, you are having fellowship with God. And it shows God your devotion and commitment to him. Whenever you praise God for his goodness, grace, and mercy, you are knocking. When praises go up, the blessings of God come down. Whenever you begin to worship him for all that he is, you are knocking. Knocking is the adult stage of prayer. And knocking is the key to answered prayer. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For whosoever asks receives. Whosoever seeks shall find, and whoever knocks 
the doors shall be open unto him or her. Now, uh, yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I'm going to be a little controversial here because I want to I want to teach something about this asking and seeking and knocking, especially about asking and knocking. OK, and that is uh, Mark 11, 20. Yeah, Mark 11, 24 says this. What sort of things you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. What sort of things you desire when you pray? Mm -hmm. So I'm believing while I'm praying that I have what I'm praying about. And Jesus says, I shall have them. So here is, now listen, this is Reverend Dickerson. <laughs> Okay, this is how I live my life, but I just want to share this with you to give you another perspective about asking and seeking God for things and knocking. Okay, and here it is. It is of my opinion. Yes, I know. So you're gonna find scripture that tells you to keep on knocking, keep on asking, keep on asking. No problem. And, and, and if you if you can get your prayers answered that way, go for it. I ain't knocking it. Just like, okay, I'm a proponent of, of what? Name it and claim it, uh, uh, blab it and grab it, call it and haul it. And, 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 and trust me, I know that's controversial. I know people don't like it. And, oh, you're going to hear people preach against it. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine. I told you I, I live my life and, and between me and God and the word, okay? And I stand on the word because what I believe God for and what I'm standing for God for is between me and God. Now, this is how I approach God. Uh, as I said, the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it and call it and haul it is controversial. And it's only controversial because it's the way it's being taught. Uh, but I name it and claim it, blab it and grab it and call it and haul it God's word. What God's word says I can claim. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just not claiming things and it appears. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's not me. But it's negative because that's how other people preach against it because other people are teaching that way. Anyway, I say that to say this. When it comes to this asking and keep on asking and keep on asking, this is where I'm really getting to. I want to give you something to think about. This is what? Developing unwavering faith, meaning we're taking our faith from what? Elementary area to a mature uh, area of faith where we're walking more maturely in our faith. So if we say we're walking by faith and not by sight, and if we say that I believe that what sort of things I desire when I pray, I receive it. My question to you is, if you believe, and again, that verse has to do with faith of you believing you have it before you see it, that is faith, that you already have it, even though you don't have it physically, even though it hasn't come yet, even though your healing hasn't come yet, you believe it's done. That's what faith, that's, that's faith, seeing it, having it before you see it. Believe that you have it before you're seeing it. So here's my point. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the controversy part. But again, I don't mean to be controversial. I just, I just want to give you something to, another perspective. And this is how, I want to just use me, how I deal with God and how I ask God for things. Here we go. It is of my opinion, <laughs> you need not keep asking God for the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Again, my opinion. Because when it comes to faith, if you believe God on Sunday, mm -hmm, uh, for whatever it is you're desiring God for, and, and based on the scripture I just gave you, Mark eleven twenty four, 24, that you had it by faith, then there's no need for you to ask for it again on Saturday. And the only reason you're asking for it again on Saturday, since you already believe and claim you have it on Sunday, but you're asking for it again on Saturday is because it hasn't shown up yet. Well, I thought you said by faith, you already have it. So what you're saying is because you don't see it yet, you need to ask God again. Now, really, let me ask you a question. Let me break this, really break this down. Do we really, do we really have to pester God about the same thing we just asked him about? Do we really got to approach him that way? Isn't he a God of all knowing? Isn't he almost all, all powerful? God? Does he already know? You need it. Don't you know you already know you've already asked for it? So here's how you should do this. When you ask God for something, I don't care what it is. 
healing, mm, I don't know, finances, job promotion, whatever it is that you're desiring God for, first of all, you need to believe that you receive it when you pray. Right there. Stop in the story. Boom. You already have it. So then what do you do in the meantime while you're waiting for it? It may, it may take longer than a week. It may take longer than a month. It may take longer than a year. What are you supposed to be doing between that time? Not keep asking him about it. Not keep reminding him that you asked him about it. No. All you do is you prayed about it. Lord, for instance, Lord, I believe I have that promotion. I thank you for that promotion. Boom, boom, boom. Whatever. If we don't know what's going to happen or anything else you believe in God for. Once you pray about it, all you do then is thank him for it every single day after that. Lord, thank you. I'll give you oh, real quick. I'll give you a perfect example. When we first bought our first house back in 1991, the builders, uh, somebody bought our old house. And so the new house needed to be built from ground and, 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 the, and the area needed to be cleared out, woods and all that stuff anyway. And the builder said it was July 26. And the builder said he can build it in two months with us moving in. No problem. Mortgage, move out the old house, move into the new house. Everything's going to be fine. So I prayed about it, me and my wife. We believed that it was going to happen in two months. That was going to, and then on the 26th of September, we were of 1991, we were going to move in, no problems, no complications. Did I keep asking him each and every day for two months, Lord, please, can I have the house? Please, can the mortgage be approved? All, no. All I did was go to work. This is what I did now. I went to work. And you know those flip calendars? From, from all the way back from September 26th, but all the way back to July 26th, when I first believed it, is put on my calendar. So each day when I flipped over the calendar, it, it said this, thank you, Lord, for the mortgage being approved. Thank you, Lord, for the house. Thank you, Lord, for the successful settlement. This was read on my calendar each and every day as I flipped the calendar. What was I doing? I was thanking him in advance for what I've asked him for and what I was believing for. I did not keep pestering him about, Lord, I need the house. I need the mortgage. Please, Lord, please, please let it. No, no. My brother said, what I'm trying to say to you is, now you, again, you, again, hear me out. You do what you want to do with this. I'm just telling you how I stand. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach undeveloped faith. And we need to grow in our faith. And to me, growing in my faith is taking a stand and, 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 and believing that once you pray to God about something, you got it. So if you already got it, then there's no need for you to ask for it again. Again, this is how I, this is how I roll. This is how I roll. And I just hope it helps somebody. I know people gonna say, no, nah, no, nah, but the Bible says so we can keep on asking. Say, okay, fine. No problem. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying, if you want to stand in faith and grow in your faith, you need to take a stand and believe God. It's already done. And the reason why you keep on asking, think about it, be honest with yourself. The reason why you keep on asking about the same thing over and over again, because you ain't seen it yet. Because that means you really haven't received it by faith. All right. So that's, that's, that's pretty much what I want to say. We, now I know, I know it's controversial. I know people are going to say this and say that, and that's fine. I'm just telling you how I stand. I'm just telling you how I pray. Once I pray about something every day after that is Lord, thank you. For instance, you know, for instance, I'm praying for my niece right now who's going through some complications. I prayed with her on the other day and it's for anybody, but I prayed with her the other day. Now each, each morning when I'm praying for the family, I say, thank you, Lord, for her healing. Thank you for her healing. The next day, thank you for her healing. Okay, I'm thank, I'm believing uh, it's our, she's already healed, and I'm thanking them for it, and I'm thanking them every day for her healing. And this is, you know, I've already asked. This, I don't have to ask him again. He knows she needs healing. I've asked him by faith. I believe that she's already healed, and therefore I'm thanking him, and I keep on thanking him until the manifestation of her healing comes to pass. That's listen. That's just my little tidbit about how to walk by faith and not by sight, to ask, seek, and not. My problem, my, my point is you don't have to bombard God's door to get his attention. He already knows you need it. You already asked. So believe that you already have it. My brothers and fine friends, ask, seek, and not. Let's pray. Our Father God, thank you for this time. I thank you for this word. I know this last bit that I just said, about asking you something one time and then just thanking you for it after that, you know, may not set well with some, but that's okay. I'm asking you, you, you deal with them with that in and, and, and scripture. We all have to find scripture for ourselves and, and deal with it ourselves and, and wrestle with scripture for ourselves and take a stand. And so far, I pray that it has touched some and blessed some and, and folks that can understand where I'm coming from and, and kind of think about that and play with that for themselves. 
Lord, I thank you for this message. I thank you for allowing me to bring it. I pray that it touched, bless, and encourage those who are listening that they be able to use it for themselves by asking, seeking, and knocking as we develop unwavering faith. If we remember to do the basics of faith and then believe it, receive it, confess it, and act like it's so. So thank you for this time. Thank you for this word. I pray that you continue to touch and bless our pastor wherever he may be and, and his family. I ask you to continue to bless all the signings who will be on, on this line. And you know what they're going through and what they're standing in need of. Those are guests who may be online. You know what they're standing up and what they're in need of. I'm asking you to touch all those who are going through bereavement. There is a, a lot going on uh, in, in, our, in our congregation and, and, and outside our congregation. We ask you to touch and bless uh, the Westcott family right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort and strength of them as well as the Harrison family comfort and strengthen them, as well as the Moore family to strengthen and comfort them. And anybody else that I'm not aware of have who's dealing with bereavement, I'm asking you to strengthen them and comfort them while they're going through right now, while they're bereaving right now in Jesus' name. Let them know that you're with them, that you'll never leave them forsaken, that you're a very present help in a time of need, trouble, and during the time of bereavement. And of course, Lord, we ask you to touch and bless everyone and anyone who needs healing. To touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their very feet. I intercede for them and claim them healed right now in Jesus' name, and by faith, I believe it and receive it for them. And I ask you to help them to agree with me and stand for themselves. We thank you. We praise you for all you're doing, as I and all the, all the testimonies, all the things that are going forth. We just thank you for your goodness, for your grace and your mercy, and we ask you to continue to have your way in our lives. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise for it. In Jesus' name, we pray, and by faith, we claim it done. Amen. Amen and amen. Remember, saints, all things are possible to him, to her, to those of them that believe. Why? Because there's absolutely, positively nothing too hard for the Lord. Never stop praying, never stop believing, and never, ever give up. Why? Because your healing and your miracle and your deliverance is on its way as long as you don't stop praying, stop believing, and never, ever give up. And remember, ask, seek, and not. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for that word, Reverend Dickerson. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um,